Hi, and welcome to this talk on installing the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as a service provider. My name is Kevin Jones. So SAML comes in two parts. There's one part called the identity provider, and this is the part that provides the SAML identity, the part that you log into if you like. And then there's the service provider, and this is the part that consumes the SAML identity. And you can't have one without the other. So the SP and the IDP talk to each other. Now in the next talk, we'll implement the IDP. But in this talk, we'll implement the service provider. Now the service provider has to talk to an IDP. And so as part of this talk, we'll use the IDP that I'll show you how to implement later on. So the code for the service provider is part of your web application, and that's what we'll see here. But as we've said, the identity provider is part of the identity infrastructure. And for these talks, we'll see how to set up this component in identity server. Okay, so let's go and write our service provider. So for these demos, I'm going to be using Rider, but this would be essentially the same as if we were using Visual Studio. So in Rider, I have the new solution window open here. So inside here, I'm going to create an ASP.NET Core web application. The solution will be called SAML. And in this case, I'm going to add a project called SP. SP for service provider. And we're going to be using .NET 7. So if I create this, we end up with a very basic web application. So before I run this for the first time, I just want to set some application properties. So in my launch settings.json, I want to make sure this is running on the port 5002 for HTTPS. I'm using that port as we have some configuration in our IDP, which relies on this URL. And these URLs have to match. So if I run this, we've hit the HTTPS endpoint on port 5002. And this is our basic application. And notice this is the service provider application or SP is the name of the application. Okay, so given that we have this basic application, let's go and add SAML to it to allow us to authenticate. So what I'd like to do is in my home controller is to add an endpoint that we have to be authorized before we can reach it. So in here, I'm going to add an endpoint called details. So that will be a public iAction result details, which will return a view of the same name. And we need to add that view. So inside the Explorer, if I go to views and home and add a view called details.cshtml. So I'd like this view to display the details of any claims that we have after we've logged in to our IDP. So inside here, let's add a header with the text details. Then I want an unordered list. And inside here, display a list of claims. So the claims are held as part of the user. And I can get the user from the context. So here we can say context.user.claims. And we'll call this thing a claim. And then for each claim we have, we'll output a list item. And inside here, we'll have the type of the claim and the value of that claim. Okay, now if I run this again and hit that page, so home slash details, we see the details header, but there are no claims printed out. And that's because we haven't authenticated yet. And as we haven't authenticated yet, we haven't got back any claims. So to force us to authenticate, back in the controller, I'm going to add the authorized header to this endpoint. And if I restart this application and refresh the page, we now get an exception. So we are saying now that I need to be authorized to get to this endpoint, and I want to be authorized so I can see these claims, but we haven't set up any authentication mechanism yet. And that's where SAML is going to come into this. So to add SAML as a service provider to our application, we have to do it inside program.cs. Inside here, 
we have to configure authentication services. So in our code here, to our services collection, we need to add authentication and we need to configure this. So to configure it, we use the options and inside the options initially, we need to set a couple of things. We have to name the default authentication scheme. And I'm gonna give that a name of cookie. And we'll use that name again in a moment. And we also have to name the default challenge scheme. And we'll give this name of IDP because we're going to use an identity provider to do our authentication. Once we've done that, we need to add a cookie with the same name as the authentication scheme. So cookie. And then I want to configure SAML. Now there is no SAML in the web application out of the box. So to add SAML, we're going to use rock solid knowledge's SAML component. So if I go to my NuGet window and in here do a search for RSK, you'll find a package called rsk.saml and I can add that to this project. And that will let me use the rock solid knowledge SAML component as a service provider. So now that I've installed the package, I can do dot add SAML to P. We have to tell this the name of the authentication scheme. And that's the same name that we use for the default challenge scheme above. And then we have to configure this again with some options. So to use this package, I need a license key. So to get the license key, if I go to identityserver.com, and then from here, follow the products and SAML 2P. And then on this page, we can fill in our details and request a demo key. And that will be emailed to you. So I've already done that. So in here, we set our options.licensee, and this is the name of the licensee. With the demo key, that's just demo. And then options.license key. These license keys last for a month. And mine looks like this. Once I have that, there are a couple more things I need to set in here. So I need to set the name ID claim type. So this is the type of claim from which we can get the user's name. We need something called the callback path. And this is the path that the IDP will call back on. And this will be configured when you set up the IDP. And in our case, it's configured to be sign in hyphen SAML. This callback path is the assertion consumer service endpoint of this service provider. Now, if the application has multiple service providers going to different IDPs, then this path needs to be unique for each service provider. We need to specify the sign-in scheme, and that's going to be the scheme that we specified above as the default authentication scheme, which is going to be cookie, and then we need to set up two more things. We have to tell the service provider how to connect to the IDP. And there are a couple of ways of doing that. But the easiest way is to let the IDP tell us what it needs. So inside here, we can provide something called the identity provider metadata address. In this case, for our IDP, it's running on localhost port 5001, and its metadata is available from SAML slash metadata. And this will allow the service provider to get information from the identity provider, which lets the service provider configure itself. Now, my identity server is currently running on port 5001. If I go back to the code here and right click on that link, I specify we'll something endpoint. called the entity and ID. Here, I can open up an editor and I can look at that metadata. Now, I don't particularly care what's in here. It's just that I wanted to show you that when we hit that endpoint, we download some information that our service provider uses to configure itself. And then once we have that, I need to add some options to my service provider. And this is in the form of an SP options object. And inside here, I specify two things. And again, this is a value that's set in the identity provider. In our case, that's going to be RSK SAML. And also inside here, I specify a metadata path. And this is the path the provider can use to get our metadata. 
And for the rock solid knowledge component, that's slash SAML slash metadata. Okay, once we have that in place, we also have to tell our application that we want to use authentication. So I do app.use authentication. Oh, and this must come before the use authorization call. And then from here, we're good to go. So if I run my application again, so I've hit the end point, and this time I'm in an incognito window, just to make sure we're not using any previous authentication here. If I go to slash home slash details, then that takes me off to the identity provider and allows me to log in. Here we're using Duende Identity Server. I'm using dummy code here, where we have in-memory clients and in-memory users, and we have a user called Alice with a password of Alice. If I log in, that redirects back to my application and we are now authenticated. And now we can see the claims within this view. So this is how you set up Rock Solid Knowledge's SAML component as an SP, as a service provider. We call add SAML 2P. We specify the appropriate configuration for this. We remember to call use authentication and then any endpoint that's marked as authorized, we now have to authenticate. That kicks us off to, in this case, identity server. We authenticate there. We come back to our application. We now authenticated, we now authorized, and we're gonna hit that endpoint. So that's the talk on using Rock Solid Knowledge's SAML component as a service provider. In the next talk, we'll see how to use this as an identity provider.